Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessica Deverell in Baltimore. And welcome to this edition of The Prashad Report. Now joining us is Vijay Prashad. He is a professor of international studies at Trinity College, and he has a new book out called Letters to Palestine. Thank you for joining us, Vijay. Thanks a lot. So, Vijay, I know you've been tracking the developments in Syria. Can you just give us an update on what's going on over there? Well, uh, over the last several months, it's the, been the case that the government of Mr. Assad has suffered some serious reversals, particularly in the western part of Syria, up near the Turkish border. Uh, they lost the city of Idlib to the rebels, and even in Damascus, there are strains in parts of the city as uh, rebel forces make gains. So it has been a, a very difficult period for the Assad government, so much so that on May 5th, which is Martyr's Day in Syria, uh, Mr. Assad made a public appearance where he said that this is a long war, and in a war there are many battles, and he acknowledged uh, the reversals. Now, why these reversals have come and what they mean, I think, is very important. Uh, you have to remember that last year, the Assad regime, uh, alongside its allies such as Hezbollah and various Iraqi militias, made some serious gains in the Kalamun Mountains, which is, again, in western Syria, and up towards Aleppo. Uh, some of these gains have been taken away by the rebels. So uh, the statement that this is an impending defeat of the Assad regime, I think, might be exaggerated. What this is really is a return to the status quo uh, that prevailed last year before the gains made by the Assad army and by um, Hezbollah and other militias. Why this has happened now, I think, is very important and bears some reflection. Uh, there are, of course, several factors why the rebels have been able to make advances. One of them is that the Assad the government has been unable uh, or having a harder time recruiting people for the army, and morale is very low. This was acknowledged again by Mr. Assad at his uh, statement on Martyr's Day, where he talked about morale and the importance of morale. I think uh, everybody understands this is a, a very important problem that the Damascus government is facing. But uh, on the other side, uh, there has been interesting geopolitical developments. Uh, remember that the rebels, when we speak of the rebels, we don't any longer really uh, consider them to be a moderate force. The main or last major moderate for, uh, force, Harkat Hazam, was overrun by Jabhat al-Nusra, which is the Al-Qaeda affiliate. So in these current uh, dashes toward Damascus and the taking of Idlib, the hegemonic force, the main military force, has been the extremist uh, groups, many of them linked to Al-Qaeda, such as, of course, Jabhat al-Nusra. But it's not only Jabhat al-Nusra that's making audacious moves. It's also the Saudi-backed uh, group called Jaish al-Islam, which is uh, led by Zaran Alush. Uh, what's interesting is that over the last couple of months, the governments of Turkey, Qatar, and Saudi Arabia have come to an agreement on helping uh, their various proxies on the ground and, in fact, having coordination between them. So Zaran Alush made a trip in April to Turkey where he met the leadership of Arar al-Sham, which is a group uh, close to al-Qaeda, uh, very close to Jabhat al-Nusra at this point. They've had their differences previously. This uh, relationship between Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and Qatar is largely predicated on the fact that Saudi Arabia no longer sees the Muslim Brotherhood as a threat, and certainly not the Syrian branch of the Muslim Brotherhood. So it's now allowing its proxy, Jaish al-Islam, to work closely with the Syrian National Coalition, the opposition force, and to coordinate with Al-Qaeda. So the gains are being made largely by Al-Qaeda, thanks to this new geopolitical alignment, and also because of the exhaustion of the Syrian military. Vijay, where does America stand in all of this? Well, the United States is not a non-actor. Uh, certainly, 
in Jordan, the United States has begun once again to train what it considers to be a moderate force. 90 Syrian volunteers have signed up for training uh, in a, a camp in Jordan run by the United States. The uh, surface reason for this camp is to have these uh, men go and fight ISIS, that is the Islamic State. But uh, the United States, when asked about you know, whether this force will also take on the Assad government, said that if they are attacked, of course, they will defend themselves. In other words, leaving the door open for these forces uh, to also engage the government in Damascus. It should be said that most of the other forces trained by the United States uh, over the last uh, four years have uh, had a very flexible uh, relationship with the Al-Qaeda affiliate in Syria, which is Jabhat al-Nusra. And indeed, many of the American-trained fighters uh, find themselves in the Jabhat al-Nusra camp, uh, which they, they see as the more audacious fighting force. So the United States is active uh, in this way. Uh, it is, uh, you know, obviously uh, coordinating with the Saudis in terms of their strategy. Uh, and it's certainly bombing uh, targets in northern Syria, which are targets of ISIS. Uh, remember that when the United States began to bomb in Syria, it also bombed a Jabhat al-Nusra stronghold. Uh, now, of course, Nusra is making major gains um, in western Syria, or at least bringing Syria back to last year's status quo. And uh, this uh, is not, it seems, bothering anybody in Washington. All right, Vijay Prashad, author of the new edited book, Letters to Palestine. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.